that thy words were heard, and I come for thy words. His words were heard. Mm -hmm. God come because of his words. Lord, I need you to do something in my life. You're giving me dreams and visions. You're speaking to me. I'm not where I should be, but I need to chasten myself so I can be where I should be so you can talk to me and through me. Did you hear what I just said? Talk to me and through me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God spoke to him. And then God spoke through him because now we're reading what God spoke through him. Yes. How, how many of you know, when we leave this earth here, we ought to have tablets or things where God spoke things to us. So let's say amen. Yeah, amen. amen. God should give us all. You don't have to be a prophet to come up with great words that God speaks to you. All you got to be is a child of God to hear His voice. Yes, He talks. Say so what? He talks to all of us. We just have to be willing to listen. But isn't it sad? Most people don't know if God ever spoke to them. Now that's sad. Yeah. That's sad. Yeah. If you want to get rid of people quick, that's playing games, start moving in the spirit. You start moving in the spirit and start calling out situations and sins and thus and thus. And they get very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Their spirits do. Yeah. And what happens with this kind of people? Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Yeah. I've watched people get up and walk out. Mm -hmm. I've, I've actually seen people run. Mm -hmm. I've seen I've seen people look at you when you start talking real harsh about the things of God and stuff, and they start blinking their eyes like they're yeah. like this, like they're real nervous, and it's getting to them, you know. It, but it's not them; it's the spirits in them, it's exactly. the devils in them. Exactly. You know? Okay. Now uh, let's go to Second Corinthians chapter eleven, verse two. Second. Yeah. Chapter 11, verse 2. Uh, Sister Joan, uh, grab the mic and then pass it over to Sister Sue. Where's the mic at? Second Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 2. Yeah, well, then Sister Joan's got it right now. Second what? Second Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 2 and 3. Somebody else is going to have to, I'm going to, I can't find it right now. Okay. Chapter 11, verses what? Second For I am a jealous, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as chaste virgin to Christ. But I fear lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This, this is such a powerful, 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 powerful two verses. And I've never really ever heard anybody really expand on it to the depth of it that he should. This is Paul speaking. Verse 1 says, Would to God you, you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. In other words, he's, he's asked them, you know, I might sign folly, foolishness, and like I'm in a bunch of folly and she speak a bunch of things. Uh, I want you to bear with me. Then he says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealous. Paul is jealous over the people that he's been ministering to. How many of you know, I hope you don't take this wrong, when I minister to people and so forth and, and God lays them in my life and in my heart and so forth and I'm pumping my heart out to them, ministering to them, and trying to present the Word of God to them. Something happens inside of me. 
uh, I become almost attached to them. Like, no, it's not. Like, like it's connected. Uh, connected. Yeah. You know, like, like, and it's a thing. Like, like it's almost my children. You know? Yeah. That's why John says, my little children, my little children. Mm -hmm. So Paul is saying right here to him. He said, for I am jealous over you yes. with godly jealousy. Hallelujah. For I have a spouse. Spouse means what? Anybody? Be wedded. Wedding. Betrothed, yeah, betrothed, marriage. And there is presented you, yeah. e e even as somebody's presenting you to Jesus, this is your bride, this is your bride. Right. I, I, I'm showing, this is the one you're going to marry. This, this, this is your bride. I, I remember the first day I seen somebody, first day I seen her. I'll never forget as long as I live. I become speechless. She's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I even told God, I said, I'll make a deal with you. If you give me that woman to be my wife, I'll never look at another woman. And I went to Germany for three years. And I thought about her, even though I went with other girls, but I couldn't get her out of my mind. And God kept her for me. And I come back and married her. My heart was just, it still is today. Just nuts over her. So he's saying right here, he said, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I, meaning Paul speaking, that I, Paul saying something, that I may present, listen, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. What, Paul? What are you talking about? Is that your job to keep him chastened? Corrected? Is that Paul's job? Is that the minister's job to look after the people? So he say amen. Amen. Is anybody still with me? Is, is, is that a minister's job to look after the congregation, the I'm sheep, and so forth? Sorry. It's Stephanie with the other side of your tablet. You got on that when you tablet. held your tablet up. I'm yeah. sorry. It's Anna. I'm hey, trying to be Anna. serious and hear the kids Anna laugh. Anna wanted us to laugh. Uh -huh. <laughs> she got a fun picture. We both saw it at the same time. It okay. wasn't all. Sorry, I apologize. Okay. Now let me go back to it again before I so rudely interrupt it. I <laughs> apologize. Paul says, for I am jolly. Paul's talking. If you don't ever, if you don't understand this, you'll never understand what a true master is about. Somebody say amen. 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 Paul's a master of God. You read two thirds of the New Testament. For I am jealous over you. Paul said, I'm jealous over the people that he right here to the Corinthian church. Yes. So he's talking to the church. He said, I'm yep. jealous over you. Yep. I'm jealous. Amen. I, I, don't, I don't want you going down here and having other people in yes. your life and other gods. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous over Amen. you. Amen. You know, I, I met you and so forth, and now you become like my kids and so forth. And and I'm trying to present you to Jesus, and I'm yes. jealous over you. Hallelujah. For I have have spouse presented you to one husband. Then he says, listen to this, you're talking about braggadocious. That I, and I'll just go ahead and put Paul's name, that I, Paul, may present you as a chaste virgin of Christ. Praise God. What are you talking about, Paul? Praise God. You're Praise about God. chasing them so they can make it as a chaste virgin to Jesus? Is that not what he's saying? Yeah, yeah. I don't care what anybody says, that that's good teaching. Yes, it not because is. it's yes. for me, that's God's word. How many of you know that we have to chasten other people if we love them? Yes. We're not talking about punch them out, but we've got to tell them, reprove, rebuke, and enjoy with all long talk and talk. You've got to do yeah. more than just say, I'm praying for you. Yes. Love them enough Amen. not to love them in hell. How many of you know Amen. people go to churches where the minister stands up front and all he's going to do is give them a nice, soft, pleasant message, and they walk out, he don't look after them for the rest of the week or whatever, so forth. Just like a while ago, I just called your mother. As soon as she heard my voice, oh, she lit up. Aww. She was just so excited. Aww. Oh, she said, oh, brother, I'm afraid. She's just going on and on and on and on. And so well, I can't wait to get back. I hope to keep my chair warm. She, you know, <laughs> so as a minister, you know, I have to look after her. Like Brandon came to me last evening. I went in the house and I was tired. It's like 8 o'clock. And I wanted to go in the house. And Brandon, he's running late, so he says, uh, 
uh, I'm going up to the farm, he said, uh, I'm just going to hang around at the farm a little bit. I knew what he was really saying. He, he says, uh, you don't have to come up. I knew what he was saying. I got up there and he said to me, he said, last night he said, I just died. He said, but every time I get around you, now this is not patting me on the back. He said, but every time I get around you, he said, I'm just so lifted up. He said, I just feel so full of light. And so he was talking again. Now, how many of you know this is what you were supposed to do? Mm. Listen, 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 please listen to me. Don't say, well, Brother Humphrey is the so called head of this, this congregation. No, we're all kings and priests. Do you realize that you all have that same responsibility to other people? So we say, man, the, the, the man and woman come in here and got saved and so forth, you know, and the other one. We are kings and priests. Yes. We're, we're a king, Brother Michael. Mm -hmm. we're, we're crown. Mm -hmm. And we're a priest. We can't shut our mouth. So, so when we talk to somebody about the Lord, and they come in and they're getting saved, so we ought to be jealous. Yes. I'll tell you one Amen. thing, buddy. My wife can tell you one thing. A man was ever jealous over his wife. I can tell you the truth right now, the bar room and so forth. And we'd be at the floor dancing, and I knew guys were looking at her. And I'd spin her around real fast. Instead of guys standing over there, and I walked over to him. I said, just stand still. She said, what? I walked over and said, uh, you, seven guys want to leave? you seven guys like living? Yeah. But if you look at my wife one more time, I'm going to kill you all. You understand me? So I walked back out, we were dancing and so forth, and I knew somebody had to be looking at her again. I spun around real quick, and the one guy was like this here. I said, you had it! And I took after him, and he ran out that bar room. I was leaping over the hoods of cars so I was falling because I waxed on my shoes so I could dance. I meant to kill him, run him completely off. <laughs> I'm jealous, Brother Michael. I didn't want nobody looking at my honey one. And this is what Paul said, I'm jealous. Mm -hmm. So when I see some other slick devil or somebody else come moving in on this territory, mm -hmm. I'm jealous. And then he's, then he's got the guts to say, Pastor Dan, listen to this. He says these words. Uh, he said that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm going to come over and say, listen, I love you so much, but I'm telling you, honey, you got to do this, and you got to do that. You got to stop this. I'm telling Amen. you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. How many want somebody to love you enough that they'll tell you right from wrong? That's why I just saw that guy yeah. who got saved here. Yeah. Both, both of them in hospital care and so forth. Him an operation, this, that, and her diabetes. And I said, don't you want your doctor to tell you the truth? Mm -hmm. Yes. But sometimes when the doctor tells you the truth, it's not everything you want to hear. Yeah. Yeah. But you have to, if you love me, you're going to tell me to, if I write Brother Michael. Yes, yes, yes. Did you know that you're in a living epistle? Exactly. Amen. And people are reading you? That's what the Bible says about oh, all of us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So we're all to be living epistles. We're watched every day. Yes. Exactly. You don't owe the wool over nobody's nope. eyes, God's or people. Hey, Sister, God. sure. Yeah, when you're sharing these verses out of um, 2 Corinthians 11, 2 and 3 and everything, it's just reminding me of James 5, 19 and 20. It says, Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth mm -hmm. and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. Now, what did she just read? If any of you... Do you have yes. the truth? And one converted. This isn't yes. pastor. Then somebody else is going to convert them. Yes. Somebody else has to come up and say, Amen. Mm -hmm. You're wrong. Amen. <coughs> you, God. You, you haven't been going to church for uh, how long and you come up with every excuse and, mm -hmm. and what, why are you not going to church? And you know you're not really reading the Bible. You know you're not mm -hmm. uh, praying. You know you're not fasting, seeking mm -hmm. God. You, you, you know you're putting your jobs and anything and everything. And how many of you know people so sick and tired of me talk about working on Sundays mm -hmm. and missing church that, that, that they just stop coming? Mm -hmm. People have actually stopped coming because I'm doing But guess what? Mm -hmm. I'm going to shut up. That's right. It's the truth because God is, is just like you said, He is jealous. And remember I shared that dream that I had that time 
where and I what happened was it was so crazy because I went to bed that night um, I was in prayer and real peaceful oh my goodness it was so peaceful and I went to bed with the peace of God and all of a sudden I woke up with a nightmare I did not know that this nightmare was from the Lord and I'm like God why would you get I was so angry I said God why would you give me such a horrible dream when I went to bed it, it was such peace and he said this is how I feel when my church that two times me and the dream basically long story short was my husband was two timing me with this girl just having a casual kind of like they're just starting to get kind of friendly over the phone and that kind of thing and I was inquiring about it and and then the Lord you know and I, my heart was pounding because it seemed like you know how the dream seemed so real mm -hmm. and I was so mad angry man oh, yeah, and I'm like up. I'm like why why would I was like well, relieved that it was a dream but yet angry still and then that's how God said that's how I feel when my church two times mm -hmm. me you yeah. know what he's actually saying there? You say about two times? Mm -hmm. When they're distracted right. by another love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Committing so adulterers and adulteresses. Spiritual yep. adultery. That's so right. So yeah. could come along and say, yep. I've espoused you, I've presented mm -hmm. you to Jesus as, as a bride. Mm -hmm. But I have to chasten you and correct you because I see somebody else cutting in on you. That's right. Spiritual and that's why yep. what the dream was here two times. Uh -huh. So I have to step in here Yep. And as soon as you step in here, what are you trying to do? Control my life? Mm -hmm. who, who do you think you are? Who, who, who do you think you are to tell me what to do and what not to do? I have my own life. I can do what I want. That's true. Mm -hmm. But you might wish to God that you listen to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Today the Lord spoke to me. And I, was, and I totally forgot about it, but I was to bring this up tonight. That how many times... Oh, it's like... It just went right out of my head. Rod and Lion Bell. Uh, yeah. Sister 2, read verse 3. Okay. Sister 2, up. Oh. Verse 3. Read, read verse 3. <clears throat> but I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. This is so important. Mm -hmm. Paul says, you know, I'm, I'm jealous of you, that the God is jealous that I inspire you or present you to one husband named Jesus. I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But, now verse 3, but I fear, mm -hmm. lest by any means the serpent, the devil, who galled who be galled even through civility, mm -hmm. there's tricks, cunning devices. Uh, so your minds, everybody say your minds. Your minds. Your mind should be corrupted, say corrupted. 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 From the simplicity that is in Christ. Yes, yes. It's so simple. You just love Jesus, just serve Jesus. That's all it is to it, just serve Jesus. Jesus, yes. Jesus, Jesus. Yes. Everything about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But the devil comes along with his tricks and says, well, now listen. You don't really have to do all that. You don't have to crucify yourself daily. You don't have to fast and pray. You, 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 you don't have to go to church. You, 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 you don't have to surround yourself with God. You, you don't have to separate yourself from, from everybody else. Uh, you know, all that stuff just goes strictly overboard. So, Jesus wants you to enjoy life. My daughter and I is still on vacation. That's Sunday, still on vacation down in Dang City, wherever it is. You know, hey, take a break, get away from everything. Get away from church and anything and everything. Just go and lay around and just relax, just enjoy life. Just, just enjoy. And what happens? Little by little, they're slipping down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I told you about the frogs, how many of my brother and sister catch these frogs around the pond? Yeah. We catch these frogs. Turn them over, take a rub there in the belly before we did that. We, we find out how we eat. These little horn weeds grow around the pond, like in Fall River. We take that little weed, stick up their backside, and, and blow their bellies up. They look like little fat blooms laying there. And turn them over on their belly, or on their back, lay it on your hand, and just take your finger and just tickle that belly. And then the frog will go sign a signal. You just lay that frog down in that water, 
on that pond and walk away and that sun's nice and hot and the next day you come back, that, son, that frog is baked. He's uh, dead. Uh, I put him to sleep and a little bit of little that sun got harder and harder and harder until he was dead. Uh -huh. And see, that's exactly what the devil does. Uh -huh. Level 11. Level 11. Level 11. Level 11. Well, I think I can skip this service and I can go to that and I, and I don't. Mm. Then here comes the minister. Here comes the way that loves you, what is it? Where is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was uh, listening to Michael Youssef on the radio. That's good. That he was talking, and uh, he, believe it or not, was uh, talking about the Corinthian church. Mm -hmm. uh, it was tolerating uh, mm -hmm. stuff that not even the yeah, uh, Romans tolerated. The doctor, yeah. Yeah. And uh, that, that example you used uh, reminded me, he used a very, very grotesque example about how an Eskimo kills a wolf. You ever, you're familiar with that? Well, Can you speak he, up? Um, he said it's a great example of how... You could just either speak up or... Yeah. Sorry. We're going to have to start sitting closer. <laughs> so we yeah. keep the microphone in our... Well, just yeah. slide your table in, and then if more people come, pull it back out. Yeah, well, um, he was using it as an example of how uh, sin uh, creeps in and eventually just takes over you and destroys you. Well, what an Eskimo does to kill a wolf is that he pours a layer of blood on a hunting knife, freezes it, then pours another layer of blood on the knife, freezes it, and keeps on pouring and pouring and pouring layers of blood until it's like this, like this big fat popsicle. And then he just sticks it out in the snow and he waits. And eventually, a wolf uh, smells the blood, and he uh, and he finds the knife, and he just starts licking and licking and licking the knife. And as he licks through the layers of layers of blood, his uh, appetite for blood just keeps increasing, 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 and he, until finally he licks away all the blood and starts licking the bare blade. The thing is, by this time, the wolf is so ravenous for blood, he's not even. He doesn't even realize that he's cutting himself, and when he feels the warm blood in his mouth, uh, he just he just uh, licks. He just keeps on uh, licking. Yeah. He has he's an app. Licking his own blood. Yeah, he's licking yeah. his own blood, and has no clue that he's bleeding to death. And um, and come next morning, uh, the wolf's dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never yeah. heard that. Now, that I've never heard that. That's a good one, Eddie. Yeah. That's so true. Mm -hmm. In other words, he's killing himself. Yeah. That's yeah. right. And, people do. Yeah, what, 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 what and, he, and the thing was, the wolf didn't even realize he was killing himself. He didn't realize that, that, that is good. the warm blood he was tasting was his own. Do yes. you realize how that plays into this here? Yes. That people don't realize mm -hmm. what they think is so innocent? Mm -hmm. How did Paul say that right here? He said, he said, but I fear lest by any means has the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. Your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. In other words, you don't realize what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't realize that you're killing yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And it, what's the matter with one lick of blood? Mm -hmm. Frozen pops up one lick. Mm -hmm. Well, another lick. But you, you know, it, it's he's talking about that here. How many of you ever ate ice cream or a popsicle or so forth? You start getting numb. Like your, your tongue goes numb, you yeah. get a headache, and everywhere like that. But if you're really hungry, mm -hmm. you still keep going. And after a while, you know, you don't realize that is a powerful, powerful. Mm -hmm. And people, little by little, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, what's the matter with eating food? Yeah. But he's eating and not realizing yeah. death is in it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the next thing you know, people mm -hmm. are like, did you hear what happened to this person and how they fell away? And it seems like all of a sudden, like overnight, they fell away, but it was mm -hmm. gradually. But mm -hmm. I, wanted to, I wanted to share this verse, before, too. Before you share that verse, okay. uh, I'm going to share it. My wife was telling me about this minister that was just on television, so well, she's seen it. And he got caught in pornography. Oh. And he got, I guess he must have, his wife must have found out about it before and so forth, and they worked it out, but he got back into it again. And what happened is people turned against him, and he killed himself. She forgave him the first time. She said, 
but this next time, he, I guess he didn't. I guess this next time he didn't want to come to her, mm -hmm. and he killed himself. Mm, yeah. But how many of you know mm. that minister? Just recently. Mm. Or anybody on drugs, or no matter what the sin is, whether it be an alcohol or whatever, nobody gets in it with the intention to end up like that. Yeah, it's not for so self-destruction. No drug addict can say, I, I want to become a drug addict. And no drug addict can say, I want to become a, uh, a drug addict. Or no per pervert or lesbian or homosexual can I want to become this or that. Right. Or, or this, this man. It's just right. gradual. There's a little leaven. Leaven still does it all up. So, so, when somebody sees us getting a little leaven, yep. we should very quickly be in love with the Lord so much that we love that person so much that we will stop. And people get mad when you mind your own business. Mm -hmm. I don't need you riding my back. I don't need you telling me what a message years ago will get to you just from there. Him and his wife didn't go to church, but he's a man just. And every time they come for a service, he would hammer the people about missing the services, missing the services. But him and his wife didn't go to church. So one day I said to him, I'll leave his name nameless, and I said, uh, you and Sister so-and-so need to get in church. He said, what? I thought about you know, all these old people. I said, well, you need to be in church too. He said, what's the matter? You think I'm going to backslide? I said, no. I said, I don't think you're going to backslide. I said, I know you're going to backslide. That's right. That's right. Guess what? They fax it. It's inevitable. They divorce and so forth. But how many of you know, I, even though I'm supposed to be a minister, I need to be fed too. That's right. So I'm going to say amen. And we all do. Come on. Mm -hmm. we have so we, even when I come in these meetings and so forth, I hear you testify this and that and read them. And we don't just go home and so Today, uh, once again, I was at the kitchen eating a couple of crabs. Some gave me. But, I don't know how much of, uh, of the New Testament I listen to here. Jesus, by, by Jesus, how, how many of you, you've got to flood yourself constantly with the Word. Mm -hmm. Somebody say amen. amen. You've you got to have somebody else minister to you. You've got to have somebody else that loves you and cares for you. Amen. Amen. But see, if we separate ourselves into so many little David D every now and then, mm -hmm. that little David D is going to show up in the end. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. When all hell breaks loose, the other newsletter we put out and so forth. Just one just went out. Talks about that. When that torment and all this stuff comes your way and so forth. And when it comes, if you're not strong in the Lord, you're gonna fall. That's you're gonna right. fall. That's right. Because we need that constant feeding. You yeah. need that constant training and so forth. Yeah. And back to the military again. But I'm yeah. telling you one thing. By the renewing of your mind, I, I did not have to say, okay, I wonder if we're gonna have to run. Five miles this morning before breakfast at four thirty. I didn't have to say that. No, I didn't have to say I wonder because it's snowing or because it's raining. What we run summer and winter, we run in our under shorts and our jump boots only. No gloves, no matter how cold or whatever. So I did not have to wonder whether I, after three years, I finally realized six days a week, buddy, four thirty. Reverly, and it's go. Mm. And we run, and if you want to, you can go back to the barracks and change clothes before you ate breakfast. And I go straight to the barracks, straight to the mess hall, and I'm hungry. Mm. So I got my mind into a routine, a set. Yeah. This is what we have to do with the Word of God. Yes. We have to train ourselves up so yes. much. The first thing I do with my eyes open, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, Lord. Blessed be your holy name. Thank yeah. you, Lord. And Pray and meditate and let him speak to yes. you this and that. And then as soon as you get out of bed, I go to the bathroom and then I get my Bible, put my Bible down there, mm -hmm. there's my Bible, and I sit there and I read and read my Bible and so forth and study over it. Just, then after we do that, I walk out in the kitchen, she's already out there, got her golf kitchen, and she pulls the chairs out, and there's both chairs, there's a thing on. We sit down and we pray together so Amen. we present it to ourselves and pray for everybody, and all Amen. you, the whole and then we present ourselves to the Lord. Praise but God. Does that mean that's the end of the prayer? No, all day long. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Come on. Okay. Yeah. You've got yeah. to train yourself up. Mm -hmm. you know? yes. Somebody say, i got to train myself I up. i got to train myself up. And then we're reading yes. a verse. We're reading a verse. Yeah, yeah. We read one verse like, <clears throat> have cards. 
and the, oh, the, the mm -hmm. and then I just pick out a card, yeah. and then it'll say where it's at, like maybe Psalms one nineteen or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we'll read that little verse. Mm -hmm. We sat there this morning at the table, and, and she had her Bible, so we have to be on praying. <laughs> And she'd read scripture, so I said, well, what's that saying? Then she'd go ahead and say, what's that saying? we discuss that, and then she'd go to the next verse. And we talk, how, how many of you know, you've got to do it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Amen. And if your husband or your cat or your dog won't do it with you, find a neighbor down the road or somebody, and go, go down and say, I want to just come in and fellowship with you in the Word. Somebody say hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. They're not so, going with me. Still, I won't follow. Yes. Well, you can always... Email, get an email, friend, and you can quote some scriptures too, or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, verse Hey, and Also, um, I keep thinking of Pastor Roberts would always say. Uh, people always say, uh, you know, Pastor Roberts, it don't take all that. He goes, he goes. Let me tell you something. He said it takes all that and more. <laughs> yeah, that's what he says. I got his tapes. Boy, yeah. he's blunt with some oh, stuff. Oh, he is. Even like, minister boy, he comes I started to try to find that here when these people walked in the door here and didn't get a chance to do it. Where it says, uh, "Chase bird with that spot, bring the blemish in such thing." Uh, I think it's in Matthew. See if you can find that for us. So read that for us. For everybody, you can look for it if you wish. And then I, I was just going to read Galatians 3, 1, where it says, O foolish Galatians, yeah. who have yeah. bewitched you that you should not obey the truth. It, does, it doesn't just say believe the truth. It says obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. How, how many of you know, that, that's what I just... What's her name, Ron, and what was her name? Diane. Diane. Ron and Diane. I kept telling them over and over and over and over again. Now you can accept the Lord. You're safe. But now there's a couple things you have to do. First thing you have to do is start praying regularly. You got to yeah. church all the Yeah. You got to read your Bible. Yeah. Then you got to get in church. You got to stay safe. You got to get in a church where the master <laughs> yeah, will take and care for you and look over you. So church. say amen. Amen. How many of you know, there's a training process yes. in our lives? Amen. Can, can we all say, I'm not there yet? I'm not there, I'm not there yet. yet. Thank God I'm not what I was. Yes. Thank right. God I'm not what I was. There is a change in my life. There is a change, change in my life. Amen. amen. Praise God. The word of glory. Amen. So say amen. Amen. We don't want to pull you too well again, but we want to get our age over time. Is it? 17 after so a couple minutes we got to so you okay. find that brother Michael. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Pastor Doug was kind enough to find it for me. It's Ephesians 5.27. What is it? Ephesians 5.27. Yeah, oh, if that's what you want. Let's see what it is. Okay. It says um, that uh, he might present her to himself. A that's it. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That he might present her to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. Okay. 527? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, let's, let's go up to uh, verse 25. Go to my Okay. Husband, I'm uh, husbands, love your wives, even, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Okay, now, he's given an example mm -hmm. here about the bride of Christ. He, how many of you know he gave his life for us? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he's saying right here, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So every one of us is a husband. We, we should love our wife so much that there would be no problem giving herself for it. Mm -hmm. I, I've been checking her for the past couple of days, and anything that, uh, if, if I bought her a candy bar or something, and I say, okay, that's a dollar, and this and that, so we're doing this and that, so we're just being like, oh, I'm selling Stanley. So, I hate it though, because I had to get plastic and tape for the windows. He says, I just spent 20 more on you. Well, it's for the house windows. 
But how many of you know it did not grieve my heart in the slightest, in the slightest, to do that? You know, she kept talking to me today about, the past couple of days, about a bigger, one of this cold children. She always puts these plastic over the blankets and this and that. And she kept saying the past couple of days, she said, I just wish I didn't have to put that plastic over her, because I like to look out the windows and watch the snows or something. And really, it was deer for that, she watches the deer and so on. And I knew that that plastic glass is expensive. Mm -hmm. The board was delicate to get it for. Mm -hmm. So I went into the place today, in case you don't know it, uh, each window here is going to cost like uh, $60 a piece for that piece of plastic glass. But is my wife worth that just to make her happy that she can look out the window and she's Happy, happy. Oh, how do I so, do you? Happy wife's a happy life. But how many husbands love their wife even if Christ loved the church, his bride, and gave himself for it? Now he comes along and he's going to describe what he's coming back for. Where are we at? <clears throat> Ephesians 5, start at 5, 25 to 27. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water of, by the word. Oh, the word. <clears throat> See, this is where the eternal salvation people need to wake up. Mm -hmm. That he might present it to himself. Wait, wait, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it. Sanctify. What sanctification means? Mm -hmm. Set apart. Set apart. Set, set that woman apart. That brother. Sanctify it with a cleansing and the washing of the water of the Word. How many of you know the more Word we get in, the more cleaner we'll get? Mm -hmm. So I say amen. Amen. No Word, no washing. Amen. So I say amen. amen. I just had to preach to this, um, at this funeral recently, it was, um, the, the, they said that the lady prayed a prayer when she was a little girl because she was a pioneer girls and everything, and we know that Donna is saved because when she was a little girl, she accepted Christ like that. This is the lady that's in the, doing the service. And, and so they all the whole service was talking about what all Donna sinful things that she did her whole life. And Donna um, was on drugs and uh, ruined her heart and everything like that. Now I'm praying and believing for, I've been believing for Donna for years that towards the end of her life, maybe when she was dying, that she did get right with God. And I, but I, I told him, I stood up and I, I said, look, I said, it doesn't quite work like that. And I, I went ahead and just preached. And here they're all sitting outside. It was a memorial service. And they're all sitting outside. My daughter was all embarrassed because I'm preaching. But they, they're sitting there with a cigarette and a beer. And they're all, and they all believe that, that they pray that prayer and they make it. And that's how I was brought up believing. And I said, let me tell you something. I said, he's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. And I just preached it like it was, you know. And I said, and if we have idols and we have sin in our life and we're not right, I said, we're not going to make it. I said, because he kicks sin out of heaven. He kicks sin out of, um, right. he kicks sin out of the, he's kicking it out of the garden. I said, he kicked it out of the garden. He kicked it out of heaven. And I said, he's not coming back for a, a, a lukewarm two time and backslidden church. He's coming back for a glorious mm -hmm. church without spot or wrinkle. And I said, and if you live a simple life, I said, he's going to leave you right behind. And that's how the service ended. But you got to tell, I said, I'm not going to let their blood, I'm not going to sit there and let their blood be on my hands. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I was at a funeral where the guy committed suicide. And they get up. <coughs> he committed suicide. Right. He okay. Went he went to heaven. You know why? They said, you want to know the truth is? The truth is he died at home. And he's in heaven. They said, you ask why? Because he was baptized as a little boy. His mom got him baptized and he gave to the poor. He never darkened the doorsteps. He was an alcoholic, he owned a bar, and he committed suicide, he made it to glory. And they had beer cans in the I casket, and the whole family has a curse of alcoholism on their life, passed down through the generations. 
and they're all partying and laughing that this guy committed suicide and made it to heaven and they can continue drinking. Jesus. And I wanted say? to stand up and scream Ichabod and I said, God, I said, this pastor that is pre preaching this message is going to answer and be held accountable for every single person here that God. heard those words. I mean, we know if you do not... you got to preach it. The Bible says, Spirit not lift up the voice like a trumpet. That's right, Spirit. Yes, amen. If we don't do it, God's going to require that blood on our hands. Amen. But amen. If we do it, God won't. If That's I right. Know, one thing we're going to have to realize, we're going to just do it anyways, or we ain't going to make it. That's right. Because I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, the, the slightest little bit of leaven, the slightest little bit of shut in our mouth, the slightest little bit of, 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 uh, of uh, not tell it as it is, mm -hmm. it'll work its way in and shut us completely down. Yep, it will. But we have to realize that people's not going to like it. No. Uh -uh. So, you know. Who cares? And you know what the Lord let me know? He said, these meetings here, mm -hmm. people will come and they're, they want to hear them, simple like this. But when that word is strong, it starts to cut and leave. But don't worry, there's another group coming. I had a half hour Bible study today just because of your newsletter. <laughs> because of the newsletter. Okay, let's finish this first here so we can get out of here. Brother Michael? Uh, no, 27. 27. Okay. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without much. How many we know? To be holy and without blemish, that's up to us. Mm -hmm. Closing with these words, Paul speaking, he said, Brother, I beseech thee by the mercies of God that you present your bodies, what? Living and holy, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, unto which God, is thy which is reasonable your, service. Reasonable service, and be not um, conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you might prove the, uh, what is good. good Perfect will and acceptable will of God is. So, what are we going to do? He said, lay aside every sin or weight that needs to be set. Yeah. People say, well, you get close to God, you'll be holy. Well, put this right here. Yeah, you, you get in Him, uh, His holiness will be on you and in you. But to get on Him, to, to get in His holy of holies, you're going to have to present your body as holy before you get in there. Mm -hmm. You can't walk in with sin and then get holy in there. Because if you walk in with sin, you better catch this. Oh, if yeah. you walk into the Holy Holy with sin, you're dead. Yeah, right. You're, you're dead. You're done. Because you're right. you're, you're wipe you out. So we, we, we can't we, we can't uh, be a sinner and just say, I'm going to be a holy man. Now, the only way you can even become a holy man is through the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. But right. once He opens Himself up to us, then we've got to do our part, present your bodies. Mm -hmm. And so, whole heart's clear. One of the biggest things you ask, what do we need to do? What must we change in our lives? And I said about our mouth, and be careful who you hang out with. Just remember the song the little kids say. Be careful of little eyes what you see, yeah. yep. your ears what you hear, yep. your mouth yep. what you speak. We yep. need to watch our eye, ear, and mouth gates. Amen. Proud of it. Then we can be holy like. as he is holy. That's right. See, that's Amen. what the Muslims do. Before they go into the presence of all of us, they got. They bow down and so forth. And they wash their eyes in case they've seen something. They wash their ears in case they heard something. They, they wash them out in case they drank a chip or something. Mm -hmm. they, they think of the washing of water presents how many of you know that's not how it is. It's got to be the word of God. So Amen. Say Amen. Uh, hallelujah. All hearts clear. Brother Michael closes some prayer. And don't forget, Thursday night, call everybody. Here, guys, mm -hmm. Charlie Bump come and so forth. Mm -hmm. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we have seven others. But either way, I'm not worried about it. But, let me put it this way here. Everybody comes. They come. If they don't come, they don't let them know. Yeah. You're a spiritual yo yo. You're a spiritual grasshopper. You're up and down. If you miss, you miss. If you put anything, Anything, the jobs of what people don't like, just don't say. If you put your jobs or your pleasures or anything before God, you are serving your God. Somebody say amen. Amen. So, okay, Lord. Oh, Lord God, um, as we close tonight, uh, may we uh, 
to truly absorb all that we've learned about being holy and being set apart and uh, the actions that are, that are required for to keep ourselves sanctified. Lord, uh, we just uh, lift up Thursday and we pray for um, we pray for a good turnout of people who just need to hear what our brother has to say. And uh, we thank you for once again providing for the needs of this ministry. Yes. Lord, thank you for proving to us once again that you always take care of what's yours. Amen. Yes, Lord, this is your ministry. And if anybody has any inkling of ownership to it, we renounce it right now. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, bless us. Uh, as uh, we go home, and uh, Lord, uh, may we present ourselves to be good examples from here on out. Amen. Amen.